This right here is a picture of the famous Fenway Park in Boston. And what I want to do is figure out if I have a batter who hits a ball, and they hit a ball right when it's one meter above home plate. So the ball is one meter above home plate. I know it's hard to see right over here. They hit the ball one meter above home plate, and they hit it at the perfect 45 degree angle, the perfect angle you need to have the optimal carrying distance. I want to figure out what the velocity that the ball, or how fast do they have to hit the ball, or what does that initial velocity of the ball need to be in order for it to cross the green, mo the, the green monster, in order for it to be a home run. So the ball's path is going to look something like is going to look something like that. And I want to figure out how fast does it have to be hit. And the green monster, if we're assuming this direction right here, it's about 96 meters away from home plate. And it's about 11.3 meters tall. So let's think about this a little bit. So our initial velocity, so let's say our initial velocity looks like this. So we're starting one meter above. So this distance right over here is one meter. One meter above home plate. I don't have to draw home plate there, hopefully, for you. Well, I'll draw home plate. That's home plate right over there. You hit the ball one meter above home plate. This is the ball right over here. And it's going to be hit with a 40, at a 45 degree angle at some velocity. So this is that vector right over here, hit with a 45 degree angle. So this right over here, the angle with the, with the horizontal is 45 degrees. And the magnitude, the magnitude of this vector right here, Let's call this, let's, so the vector itself I'll call our initial velocity vector. Our initial velocity vector. And the magnitude of it, I'll just call it lowercase, lowercase initial velocity. So this isn't a vector right here. This is just its magnitude. So how can we represent this vector in engineering notation? Well, we just have to figure out the magnitudes of its, of its horizontal and vertical components, or its x and y components. So the magnitude. The magnitude of its horizontal component is going to be v sub i. It's going to be this magnitude times the cosine of theta. It comes from basic trigonometry. We, do, we go into depth in that in previous videos. So v sub i cosine of theta, that's its horizontal component, the magnitude of its horizontal component. And the magnitude of its vertical component, we've done this many times before as well, is the magnitude of the vector times the sine of theta. And actually, we know what theta is, so I don't have to even write theta. Theta is, we know what the angle. Theta is the general the Greek letter that you would use for the angle. But we know that the angle is 45 degrees. So I say v sub i times a cosine of 45 degrees. And then the vertical component is going to be the magnitude of our vector, v sub i, times sine of 45 degrees. Sine of 45 degrees. And both cosine of 45 degrees and sine of 45 degrees are both square root of 2 over 2. Square root of 2 over 2. That's the easiest ones to have in your brain, although you can use a calculator if you don't remember that. And so if we wanted to write our vector, if we want to write our initial velocity vector, our initial velocity vector, and now I'm making explicit it's a vector, is equal to the sum of these two vectors. So it's the magnitude of the x component is v sub i times square root of 2 over 2, actually let me write it this way, is equal to square root of 2 over 2 times v sub i, times our, the magnitude of our, initial, of our initial velocity, times, and then the direction, this is just a magnitude right now, times, the, and the direction is in the i direction. So we can multiply this times the i unit vector. I'll do that in orange times the i unit vector. The i unit vector has magnitude 1, and it goes in the positive. It's pointed in the positive x direction. So this is telling us the direction. We're going in the positive x direction. Now let's do the same for the vertical component. The magnitude is square root of 2 over 2 times v sub i. Square root of 2 over 2 times v sub i. And it's going in the positive vertical direction. Or we can just multiply this times the j unit vector. This is a vector that has magnitude 1 going in the positive, in the positive y direction. And so we're just scaling it by this much to get this vector right over here. Now, what we want to do is think about the, the, the distance that this thing's, or more specifically, the displacement that this thing is have, this ball is going to have to go through in order to clear the green monster. So it's going to have to, in the x direction, it's going to be displaced. In the x direction, it's going to be displaced, what is it, 96 meters. So this, 
in the x direction, it has to be displaced 96 meters. And in the y direction, the wall is 11.3 meters high, but it's already starting off 1 meter high. So the wall, let me make it clear, the wall, the wall, it's not, I'm not drawing this to scale. We'll do that in a different color. I should do it in green, because it's the green monster. So the wall has is 11.3 meters high, but the actual displacement, so let me just draw this as a wall, 11.3 meters, but the actual displacement doesn't have to be 11.3 meters. It has to be, the, if we're starting at 1 meter altitude, we have to get 10.3 more meters in altitude. So the displacement has to be 10.3 meters in the, in the uh, in the vertical direction. So if we want our kind of displacement vector right when it's crossing the wall, it should be, or let's think about it right when it's, if it was just good enough to hit the top part of the wall, let's think about what that displacement vector would have to be. And we'll solve for that velocity, and then any velocity better than that will make it go even further and faster and higher and all of the rest of the things. So right when it's crossing the wall, if we wanted to just skim by or just hit the tip of the wall, our displacement vector, our displacement vector, maybe I'll call it displacement necessary, it, when it's 96 meters in the, in the x direction, so when it's 96 meters in the x direction, I just put this n for necessary. When it's 96 meters in the x direction, and I won't write the units here right now just for simplicity, when it's 96 meters in the x direction, it has to be, have an upward displacement of 10.3 meters in the y direction, so plus 10.3 times the j unit vector. This is our necessary displacement. So let's just think about displacement as a function of elapsed time, and then figure out what the necessary velocity would be to kind of get this displacement at some point, to get this necessary displacement. So our displacement as a function of time, our displacement, I'll do it, actually let me write it over here. Our displacement as a function of time, displacement as a function, instead of writing the delta t's like I've been doing in all of the other videos, I'll just write time. But this is time since, elapsed time since ball hit. Since ball hit. So you could view it as a change in time since the ball hit as well. But not writing that delta over and over again will just simplify the writing a little bit. So that's going to be equal to, and we've proven this, or hopefully we've proven this formula to ourselves multiple times. We, we derived it in multiple videos. But the general formula is it's equal to your initial velocity. It's equal to your initial velocity times time, times elapsed time. I've used delta t in previous videos, plus plus acceleration, plus the acceleration vector. And actually, your initial velocity is also a vector. It has to be a vector quantity. Plus your acceleration vector times time squared times time squared over 2. And we've seen this multiple times. But what's neat about this problem is since we already wrote our stuff in engineering notation, we can just go, go ahead and straight up and apply this formula that we've already derived in multiple videos. But before we do that, you might say, well, what's the acceleration vector going to be if we think about it in two, in two dimensions? Well, the acceleration vector is the acceleration due to gravity on an object in free fall near the surface of the planet. So this is going to be, it's not going to have any, it's not going to have any x component. It's not going to have any x component. I could just write 0 i, I don't even have to write that. And its y component is negative 9.8, I won't write the units here for this problem to save space, negative 9.8 meters per second squared in the vertical direction. So we, if we scale the vertical vec the j vector by negative 9.8, the negative points it down, and then we scale it by 9.8, that is a this is the acceleration due to gravity. So we have, I think, everything we need. We have everything we need, and what we'll do is we'll set up two constraints, and then we can solve for, and then we can solve for, we'll be able to solve for the magnitude the magnitude of our initial of our initial velocity. And I realize I'm already close to 10 minutes. So now that we've set up the problem, I think this is a good pausing time. You might want to try it for yourself and we'll tackle it in the next video.